I've been asked on a number of times to do CPU heatsink installation tutorials, so I'm going to start with one on the Corsair A50. So this is their mainstream CPU cooler. You can see it is a three uh, thick eight millimeter heat pipe uh, direct touch tower heatsink. So that's actually fairly straightforward. So we'll start with the CPU in the socket. That is a Core i7-875K unlocked. So the first two things we're going to need are some uh, TP. In this case, uh, Charmin. Very, very soft, very nice. And we will also need some rubbing alcohol. So, uh, go ahead and open that up. Rubbing alcohol is going to allow you to remove the old thermal compound and not leave behind any nasty residue. So, go ahead, get some rubbing alcohol on there, and then wipe off the old thermal compound. Honestly, it doesn't have to be perfect, as long as you do a reasonably good job. Uh, what I usually do is I'll I'll wipe off as much as I can with the wet part of the uh, of the toilet paper or paper towel or whatever I happen to be using, and then um, I'll go back and grab a fresh piece, and then just uh, wipe off any sort of random residue that might be left. So that gets our CPU nice and clean and ready for the next stage. So you can see it's all. Uh, you can't see that, never mind. Okay, so the next stage is to put on whatever brackets are required in order to mount the CPU. So I've never mounted this cooler before, so this is gonna be a bit of a journey of discovery for me, uh, trying to mount a CPU cooler that I've never done before. Um, couldn't be that complicated. I mean, Corsair usually does a pretty bang up job of this kind of stuff. So I found four screws and I found a backplate. So let's assume the backplate goes on first and that it is not adjusted to the correct setting. So I'm moving it one notch in to LGA 1156 because this is a universal backplate. It's compatible with 775, 1156, and 1366. So we're going to go over here. If we have a case with a, um, uh, with a, a CPU backplate hole, then this is where that really comes in handy because most aftermarket coolers, um, Anyway, the good ones are going to require a back plate so that they mount nice and uh, nice and strong. Okay, so we've got to kind of adjust these just a little bit with that on there. That's kind of interesting. So I'm going to flip over my board. Uh, so they don't line up quite the way that I had them adjusted. And that's one thing that can be a little bit finicky about uh, universal anything, is that it tends to be sort of not quite without some fine adjustments. So there we go. Just go ahead and make sure that's on there pretty good. You know what, I think one of them is not uh, not in the right position still. There we go. So just wiggle those a bit. Ah, now you can see it's, uh, it doesn't have to stay in place as long as the holes are coming up and it's not putting any pressure on the mounting holes of the motherboard. So there, we've done that part. We have a back plate. Success. Okay. Oh yeah, another uh, important tip for upgrading your heatsink is never leave an open bottle of rubbing alcohol sitting on the table because at some point you will knock it off and it will be bad. It will not be fun. Oh, you have four little rubber grommets. I wonder if those go on the back of the back plate. I don't have the instructions. I will be back in just a moment. Okay, well I can't figure it out, so let's assume it does nothing. Uh, with some with some coolers, the backplate is a necessary piece because the uh, the the backplate. Sorry, the uh, the grommets are a necessary piece because the backplate doesn't have any non-conductive coating, but this one does. It has a plastic cover over the backplate, so you don't have to worry about installing it there. All right, so here we are. Now we have this piece which is going to go through right here, and then we will affix it to the heatsink with the four included screws. Oh, there we are. So this is fairly straightforward. Basically, we're just taking the hold down plate and attaching it to the CPU cooler. And that's probably gonna go in from the bottom based on how difficult this is if I try to do it this way. There we are. 
Yeah, you can see those screw holes are countersunk, so that yes, you can install these screws from the bottom and should, because that is how it is designed to work. I don't really have a whole lot of commentary. I already said everything that I really thought about this heat sink at the time that I uh, unboxed it. That's the thing about guides, is if you do them in real time, like on the camera, as I tend to do all of my videos, then there's a lot of like long pauses. Okay, so uh, this is the AMD mounting bracket, which we will not need today. Now why don't we put on some thermal compound? So here, putting on thermal compound. This is really easy. You take your little syringe, and then you go like this. You zoom in. There, that's enough. That's probably more than enough. I probably put on too much. That's okay. Here, I'll let you see how much I put on. If my camera would focus, that would be great. There we are. That is how much I put on. It is probably too much, but I mean, I could make the argument that I can put on a little bit extra because there are some grooves in between the, uh, the heat pipes and the aluminum base of the heat sink. So maybe we need to fill in more gaps. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'm going to be installing a Ram fan. So one thing that I want to be aware of is that I need enough room uh, to the side of the cooler to install my Ram fan. So there we are, we placed the cooler down on top of the back plate. That's very straightforward. And then we go ahead and tighten the thumb screws. You always want to put the thumb screws on before actually uh, like tightening them down with a lot of force. See, so I've just put them on. They're not actually holding anything right now. Um, that way you can uh, tighten them all at the same time which is going to allow you to apply even pressure to your CPU throughout the mounting procedure, which is uh, going to reduce the chances of damaging it or your motherboard. So you can see that these are thumb screws, but they do have uh, Phillips head uh, holes at the top. So what I'll be doing is I'll be tightening them, up, that, tightening them up just a little bit. So finger tight right now, all four, if I want it to be... Um, really anal retentive, I could go in diagonals like this. Okay, make sure we're tightening that up real good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give them another however much with the screwdriver. So yeah, these are this is a good mounting system. It's designed to only go as far as it needs to go. So um, you can't just, here, I'll show you what I mean in a sec there, it's mounted. Um, so you see how the threading on the screws actually, or on the uh, back plate actually ends? and the screws only go on as far as the threading goes. So it means you can't over tighten it, which is a really good feature. So now let's go ahead and take the fan that's included with the A50. And we're going to orient the clips right here so that they're on the side where they uh, clip into the heatsink. And we're going to push it on just like, like something, just like that. Then we're gonna take our CPU fan and we are going to either plug it straight into the motherboard header, which is here, there's our CPU motherboard header, or we can plug it into this handy dandy noise reduction adapter, which is basically just a resistor in line, and then we can plug that in. That was it. That was the whole installation procedure for the Corsair A50. Thank you for checking it out, and don't forget to subscribe to my video blog.